Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Abdul Nasser Jangda. If you enjoy and benefit from listening to our podcast, please donate to Qalam by visiting supportqalam.com. We love being able to share this content for free with you, and your donation ensures that we are always able to do so. Each podcast we produce has tens of thousands of listeners, so the opportunity for gaining immense reward by supporting this effort is endless, insha'Allah. You never know who will be able to benefit from your contributions and donations. Jazakumullahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Inshallah, continuing with our study of the life of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Asiratul Nabawiyah, the prophetic biography. We started discussing in the previous session. We started talking about the tenth year of Hijrah, the tenth year of the Prophet sallallahu residence in the city of Medina. And what we talked about previously was the fact that the region of Yemen which of course, uh, very tragically and unfortunately, has been in the news a lot lately because of the tragedy uh, that is currently unfolding within Yemen. Um, It is, you know, unfortunately, once again, very tragically, uh, like a lot of the tragedies that we witness, uh, it is by the doing of, you know, uh, people's actions. ظَهْرَ الْفَسَادُ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِ النَّاسِ This is the chaos and the corruption that human beings wreak upon the earth. Um, and so it's a terrible, terrible tragedy that's going on. And subhanAllah, when you look back in history, even prior to the time of the Prophet wasallam, you see that the region, the place of Yemen, has always been a place that has undergone a lot of suffering. Uh, and these are people who have been tested by Allah in so many different ways. Um, but what's beautiful and remarkable about them is that through all these tests and trials, they have always remained the people who are primarily identified by their faith, by their commitment to knowing their religion and spirituality. They are people who are known that are uh, people of great character. Uh, They have an uh, exemplary disposition and demeanor. They're very hospitable. Uh, So much so that the Prophet ﷺ complimented them uh, by identifying three traits about them. In one singular narration, he mentions two things. He says, Al-Imanu Yamani wal hikma Yamaniya that faith is a trait and a characteristic of the Yemeni people, and wisdom is a quality of the Yemeni people. And in another narration, he said that they are humble people, very humble people. Um, And so we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alleviates their suffering. Um, However, we talked about the region of Yemen coming into the fold of Islam, and the Prophet ﷺ sent his very young, dynamic student and mentee, Mu'adh bin Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu to Yemen to preach there, teach there, and also create a system of governance, um, implement a system of governance, and you know, help them kind of organize their lives under their new, newly embraced faith and religion of Islam. Today we're actually going to continue to talk about Yemen, but in light of a different individual. Today what we're going to talk about is the fact that the Prophet ﷺ prior to the Hajj, the farewell pilgrimage, Hajjat al-Wida, the Prophet ﷺ sent Ali bin Abi Talib to Yemen as well. Which really tells you, he first sent Khalid bin Walid. So first he sent Mu'ad bin Jabal, then he sent Khalid bin Walid, then he sent Ali bin Abi Talib. This is the cream of the crop, the brightest of the bright. The Prophet ﷺ sent his best and his brightest. Um, and so that goes back to that same idea of what we were talking about. The Prophet ﷺ had this succession plan. He had trained these people, prepared these people to carry on the work and the message uh, after he was gone. 
So in the narration of Al-Barra ibn Azib, narrated by Imam Ahmad in his Musnad, he says that the Prophet ﷺ sent a group of us with Khalid bin Walid. Now Mu'adh was already there, Mu'adh bin Jabal was already there implementing, you know, kind of governmental structure and teaching people their religion and this new way of life for them. He sent Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala anhu because there was some news that he had re, that that he had received that there were certain areas in Yemen where there were people who were gathering together to basically confront and fight the Muslims. So he sent Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala anhu with a small force, a small battalion to go in to deal with this potential threat. Um, and after Khalid radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Khalid bin Walid, he went there and he basically assessed the situation and all in all, it was a very you know, good and calm and stable situation. He then sent um, Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, thumma ba'atha aliyan, ba'da dhalika makanahu. He sent Ali and he said, you go there to Yemen, mur ashab khalid man sha'a minhum an yu'aqiba ma'aka fal yu'aqib wa man sha'a fal yukhbil that you tell the people who went in the small battalion of khalid those of them who want to stay with you there to assist you they may do so and those who want to come back with Khalid to Medina, they can come back to Khalid, they can come back to Medina along with Khalid. But I need Khalid back here and I want you to go and you know handle things over there. So this is where now it gets a little bit interesting. Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu went there, he spent a little bit of time there, he did what he was told by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to do there teach people, make any judgments that needed to be made, kind of make sure that the will of the Prophet ﷺ, kind of the, the, the wishes of the Prophet ﷺ were being fulfilled. That he was basically carrying out the agenda of the Prophet ﷺ there in Yemen. Um, and once he was able to assure that, he said, ensure that and after that, I want you to meet me at Hajjat al Wida. I want you to come and do the farewell pilgrimage with me. And that's exactly what Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu did. However, there are a few interesting things uh, that ended up occurring with Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu that I found very fascinating. First of all, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one of the biggest components of Islam, one of the biggest aspects or components, teachings of Islam, is the element of honesty, integrity, ethics. Ethics are extremely, an extremely important part of the religion. So much so that in usul, in the realm of like the principles of Islamic jurisprudence, we talk about this, that when it comes to legal rulings, they have the ability to be flexible and malleable. Legal rulings have a certain amount of you know, flexibility to them. They have a certain amount of flexibility and versatility. And they change from time to time, place to place. When it comes to ethics though, ethics are one of those things that are considered part of the universals. They were always there in the teachings of all the prophets of the past. And the Qur'an lays down the ethics. The Prophet ﷺ talks about ethics. And ethics, a lot of times in books of usul, they're called akhlaqiyat and things like that. It's not just about good manners, it's the ethics of the religion. And that's why the, the most expert and most knowledgeable of our scholars, whether they be scholars of fiqh and aqidah and philosophy, they would be ethicists. They would talk extensively about the ethics of the religion. So ethics are extremely important. And it's an important part of the Qur'an, it's an important part of the teachings of the Prophet ﷺ, and it's important in Islam. The Prophet ﷺ never compromises ethics for anything. He was extremely gracious, very lenient, very accommodating, but he would not compromise the ethics. So much so that one time he saw a man, there were some you know, money of sadaqa, charity being gathered together. Uh, and he was walking with his grandson, Hassan, radiallahu anhu, and he was a child. And while he was walking with him, you know, the child saw that there was like a little barrel of dates. And he saw that, and just like a child does, a child walks by some fruit, some candy, what do they do? They grab one. So he sees that barrel of dates, bucket of dates, and he reaches in and he grabs one. 
The Prophet Sallallahu took it out of his hand and he put it back and he said, no, that is charity. We, the family of Muhammad, we are not allowed to eat from charity. And even though he's a child, there's no legal culpability. There's no liability for a child. In, in the terminology of the religion, we call that taklif, mukallaf. A child is not mukallaf. He's not obligated to abide by the, um, the rules, the structure of the religion. It's a child. But he still would not compromise ethics. He saw another time there were the spoils of war. They had just got done with a battle and the things were gathered in the area. So there were the spoils of war. And they had not been distributed yet. And he saw that one of the companions, one of the people, he went over there and he saw like a, he saw a bow, you know, like a bow and arrow. So he saw that there was a really nice bow in the heap. And he picked it up and he was trying it. And, you know, when you're not using the bow, they, some, they, they wear it kind of over their shoulder. So he kind of put it on to see if it would fit him and how it looked on him. And he was just kind of trying it on. He didn't take it. The Prophet ﷺ said, does it feel good to wear fire around your shoulder? Because he basically said that that doesn't belong to you. It hasn't been distributed yet. The Prophet ﷺ was, he was so kind and generous. We see so many narrations where he's so forgiving and kind. But when it came to the ethics of the issue, the Prophet ﷺ would not compromise ethics. Ali radiallahu ta'ala, he taught Ali to do the same. Do not compromise the ethics. And Ali radiallahu ta'ala in his personality, he was an extremely intelligent person. Super sharp. Extremely intelligent. And he was a man of great piety. He was an ascetic. He would eat simple, wear simple, live simple. He slept on the ground, ate a couple of dates, walked on his feet wherever he went. He was a very humble man, a very pious man. He used to fast and pray. Read the Quran hours and hours every day. He was a remarkable person, Ali bin Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala. But the thing about him was, he had a certain kind of edge to him. He wasn't necessarily a harsh person. But when it came to ethics, he was very uncompromising. He was very uncompromising when it came to ethics. Because he was raised by the Prophet ﷺ. And he inherited that. He learned that from the Messenger ﷺ. So one fascinating thing when he goes there to Yemen, one of the things that happens, there's actually two things. There are two incidents that are mentioned. Number one, some of the people that had traveled from Medina and had come to Yemen as part of the group, they had camels that they had ridden to Yemen. They had their animals, their camels. Obviously, the trip was very long. It was very arduous. So they said, our camels have gotten really worn out on the trip. There were some camels that had been gathered there within Yemen. They, you know, they had been gathered as part of the Bayt al-Mal, the public fund. People had donated camels. So some of these people that came from Medina, they said, you know, our camels have undergone this long journey. They've gotten really worn out and this and that. Um, would it, why don't we just swap them out? We'll put our camels into the public fund and we'll take these camels. They're, they're younger, fresher animals. We'll take them. And Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, absolutely not. Ali said, no, absolutely not. I will not allow you to do that. That will not happen on my watch. And he absolutely refused to allow them to do this. This is one incident that occurred. A second incident that occurred with Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu when he ended up going uh, there to Yemen was that when he arrived there in Yemen, he went to go kind of visit another region, another place, another tribe. When he came back to the base of operations where he was operating from, one of the locals, who was a very wealthy person, he had basically gifted very like luxurious garments. Like almost like royal, like robes that looked like they belonged to like the royal family. So he had, so one of the locals, I guess trying to maybe some, you know, win some favor with these people, knowing that they were close to the leadership, he had gifted them these very fancy robes. 
When Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu came back and he saw them wearing all these fancy robes, he said to them, Mahada, what is this? What are you guys wearing? Where did you get this? They said, Kasana Fulan. So and so he gifted it to us. And he said, This was for us. قَالَ فَمَا دَعَاكَ إِلَى هَذَا قَبْلَ تَقْدُمَ عَلَى رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ فَيَصْنَعُ مَا شَاءَ فَنَزَعَ الْحُلَلَ مِنْهُمْ So he basically said that I was gone to take care of some things, to report back to the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم, and then when I come back, and then this is what you people do, you're taking favors, and you're basically taking gifts from the locals, that's what you're doing? You're using your position of influence to take gifts from the locals? He made them all take off their robes and give them back. And many of them were really upset by this. For obvious reasons, you can imagine, just normally people would get upset. Why are you being so harsh? Why are you being so tough? So these are the two things, two incidents that specifically happened um, with Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And some of the people that he was there with. So... At this particular time, some of the people that were with him there developed a little bit of you know, hard feelings towards Ali radiallahu ta'ala. And they said, you know, he had been al-jafa, jafana. He had been very harsh with us. So one of them says, kuntu ubghidu aliyan. So I just hated him now. I didn't like him. I was mad at him. And he's... Another narration, he talks about that, you know, I was really, really upset with him. He had been really harsh with us. He didn't let us switch out our camels. He made us give back the clothes that we had been gifted. So he said that he needed to send a report back to the Prophet wasallam about how things were going in Yemen. So he wrote a letter to the Prophet wasallam, And one of the guys who he says, I didn't like him, I was mad at him. He gave it to me and he said, I need you to take this to the Prophet ﷺ and provide any clarifications or explanations that he might require about what happened here. Read the letter to him and answer any of his questions. So he said, I went there, I read the letter, فَجَعَلْتُ أَقْرَأُ الْكِتَابِ وَأَقُولْ صَدَقَ صَدَقَ Yes, that's, there's nothing more to add. This is correct, this is correct, this is correct. And I gave the full report to the Prophet ﷺ. He said, while I was sitting there reading the letter, confirming everything in the letter, asking the Prophet do you have any further questions? And he, no. And I, gave him, I was giving him the report. The Prophet reached out and he grabbed my hand. I was holding the letter in my hand. He reached out and he grabbed my hand that I was holding the letter in. He held my hand. You know, somebody's like kind of busy with something, you reach out, you grab their hand. He grabbed my hand, so I looked up at him. And the Prophet looked into my eyes. He smiled and he said, Atubghidu aliyan? You're mad at him, aren't you? You're mad at him, aren't you? You're angry with him. And he said, this is a messenger of God, peace be upon him. You don't lie to him. There's no point in lying to him. So I said, naam, yes, you are correct. I am upset with him. There's a few of us who are upset with him. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, لا تبغضه. Do not be mad at him. وَإِن كُنْتَ تُحِبُّهُ فَاسْدَدْ لَهُ حُبَّهُ In fact, even if you liked him, I would tell him that you should, I would tell you that you should love him. Forget about being mad at him. لا تبغضه. Forget about being mad at him. Even if you said you liked him, I would tell you that you should love him. He's Ali. He's my Ali. And one of the things was the Prophet ﷺ told them, he said, you're mad because he didn't let you swap your camels out with you know, the camels in the public fund. And he didn't let you accept those gifts from the locals. Do you know, he told him then, he said, do you know in terms of the spoils of war that were collected in Yemen, Ali declined to take his full share because he wanted to give more to all of you. The share that he was supposed to get of the spoils of war in Yemen, the share that he was supposed to get because he was a leader of the army, he declined his share so that there would be more for you guys. 
you didn't know this, did you? And he said, no, I didn't know it. And he said, at that moment, I de developed a great admiration and a respect for him. Because I understood, he, he left his own money on the table for us. That the only reason why he was telling us not to take those camels and not to accept these gifts, not because he wanted more for himself, but because he truly was such an honest and uh, such a great man of integrity. Such a man of honesty and integrity. In another narration, he, another person says, another individual who was also in Yemen with Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says that when I came to Medina, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he looked at him and he said, he said, I had mentioned to Abu Bakr. I went to Abu Bakr, when I got to Medina, I went to Abu Bakr and I told him, you know, I'm really upset at Ali. He did this, he did this, he was really harsh with us, etc, etc. So I complained to Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu said to me, he said, don't say this to the Prophet sallallahu Like don't complain to him. Because Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu understood, you don't have a real complaint. I know Ali, he's an honest man. You're just mad because... You, you, did, you were trying to do something that you shouldn't do and he yelled at you. That's why you're mad. So don't complain. He said, when I went to the Prophet ﷺ, maybe Abu Bakr radiallahu had told the Prophet ﷺ that listen, someone might complain about Ali radiallahu ta'ala. No, I just want to give you a heads up. So this man, Amr bin Shas, he says, when I went to go see the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Wallahi, ya Amr, laqad aadaytani. The Prophet ﷺ said, Wallahi, Amr, you have hurt my feelings. I said, Amr, the Prophet ﷺ said, no, Wallahi, ya Amr, you hurt my feelings. You have caused me pain. He said, I said, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raja. The Prophet ﷺ tells you, you've offended me? I said, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raja. A'udhu billah. I take refuge with God. Well, Islam, I take refuge in my Islam. An udhiya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa that I may have offended the Prophet of God. Where would I go if I offend the Prophet of God? What have I done? He said, I was so like shocked. He said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa looked at me and he said, Man aadha aliyan faqad aadhani. Someone who has offended Ali has offended me. You, 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 you're mad at Ali. You're not talking to him, you're upset with him. Well, that upsets me. Because he didn't do anything wrong. So, this is one of the uh, uh, interesting kind of interactions that happened and shows you the ethics of Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu and how he was willing to do something that would be unpopular with the people because it was the right thing to do. And you see the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa vouching for him. The second thing I wanted to mention is that the Prophet ﷺ had sent Khalid bin Walid to deal with that tribe. The tribe's name was Hamdan. The Hamdan tribe was be becoming very confrontational. And they were getting very agitated. They wanted to fight the Muslims. Khalid bin Walid who spent six months in Yemen trying to deal with these people. And they would not listen. They had basically put up a barricade. They said, we are not interested in talking to you. We don't want to hear what you have to say. We are ready to go to war with you if need be. And it was a very bad, a very tense situation. The Prophet ﷺ, he sent Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he told Khalid that the Prophet ﷺ has called you back to Medina. He needs you there. The companions, Barra bin Azib, he says that, Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu came. He gathered us together. He led us in the prayer. It was time for prayer. After we got done with prayer, he said, everybody line up. He lined us up in one line. Then he stood out. He stepped out in front of the line. And he asked the representatives of that tribe, Hamdan, to hear him out. And then he read to them a message, a message from the Prophet, peace be upon him, that the Prophet had dictated to Ali. So he read them the message of the Prophet, peace be upon him. They heard the message. They said, give us a moment. They went back, they conferred amongst one another, and they basically came and they said, we are ready to become Muslim. It's considered one of the virtues of Ali. 
for Asramat Hamdanu Jamian. They all became Muslim. And he wrote a letter back to the Prophet ﷺ reporting to him that everyone in Hamdan has become Muslim. The threat is gone, they all became Muslim. No fighting was necessary. When the Prophet ﷺ, when he received the letter, he told someone, read this to me. When they read it to him, and he heard the news that Aslam Hamdanu Jami'an, the Prophet ﷺ, he fell into sajda. Kharra sajidan. He, he did sajda right on the spot, out of shukr, gratitude to Allah. And then he lifted his head, and then he made dua. He said, Assalamu ala Hamdan, Assalamu ala Hamdan. May God's peace be upon the people of Hamdan. May God's peace be upon the people of Hamdan. This is not only uh, part of the uh, part of Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu's endeavors in Yemen. Number two, this shows and illustrates one of the virtues of Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that he was the means of bringing all these people to Islam. Number three, I particularly also wanted to mention this, because this once again illustrates something that has been a constant theme in our study of the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him. And that is the simple fact that the Prophet always preferred peace over war. You see, when he finds out that we did not have to fight that tribe, they became Muslim. He fell into sajda and he thanks and praises Allah and he sends peace upon those people and prays for those people. The Prophet ﷺ did not want war. He wanted peace. He did not want death. He wanted to preserve life. So this is something that Imam Bukhari uh, and others narrate about Ali radiallahu ta'ala on whose endeavors in the region of Yemen. The next thing that I wanted to talk about, um, and this is really fascinating, is that when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam So one of the other, I had mentioned before about some of the people being angry with Ali radiallahu ta'ala because he was being harsh. He said, one of the other people who went to go see the Prophet sallallahu um, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi, when he went to go meet the Prophet sallallahu alayhi he says, I went to go visit him. I went back to Medina and I greeted the Prophet sallallahu he greeted me. سألني عن نفسي وأهلي. He asked me how I was doing, how my family was doing, and then he asked me more questions. How is everything back in Yemen? How is everything going? So he said I couldn't hold myself, and I said, يا رسول الله ما لقينا من علي من الغلظة وسوء الصحبة والتضييق. Ali has been really mean. He's been really harsh, and he's been really tough with us ever since he came down there. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. He continued to listen to me. The Prophet ﷺ was listening to me and then he slowly just kind of like leaned away from me a little bit. He seemed like he wasn't really liking the tone that I was taking. And he said, I didn't pick up on the hints. I just got caught up. You know, I got angry. I got heated. So I kept on going on and on. He's been like this, he's been like this, like this. And I kept on going, I wouldn't stop. And the Prophet ﷺ just kind of like leaned away from me a little bit, kind of took some distance from me. And I wasn't picking up on the hints, the clues. So finally, the Prophet ﷺ leaned over and he tapped me on my leg while I was talking. He said, hey, you tapped me on my leg. I was sitting right next to him, you tapped me on my leg. He said, ya Sa'ad ibn Malik. His father, Sa'ad ibn Malik, his father was a shaheed. He was killed in the battle of Uhud. He was a martyr. He said, Yabna Shaheed, you are the son of a martyr. He said, Ma Ba'da Qawlika li akhika Ali. He said, Stop talking about your brother Ali. He said, Fa wallahi laqad alimtu annahu akhshana lakin fi sabilillah. He said, Yes, I have no doubt. Ali was probably tough on y'all. But he was tough on y'all for a good reason, for the sake of God. He was tough on y'all because of it was the right ethical thing to do. He was not tough on you for himself. He wasn't tough on you because he wanted something from you. He was tough on you because it was the right thing to do. And he said from that, at that moment I said to myself, ثَكِلَتْكَ أُمُّكَ سَعَدَ بْنَ مَالِكَ I cursed myself, how could you do this? أَلَا أَرَانِي كُنْتُ فِي مَا يَكْرَهُ مُنْذُ الْيَوْمُ وَمَا أَدْرِي لَا جَرَمَ وَاللَّهِ لَا أَذْكُرُهُ بِسُوءٍ أَبْدًا سِرًّا وَعَلَانِيَا he said, from that day on forward, I made an oath to myself, I will never speak ill of Ali ever again. 
Prophet loved him. He appreciated him. He vouched for him. And he said, I never spoke ill of him ever, ever again. The last thing that I wanted to mention here that is really, really um, amazing is that there are actually two things I want to share. One thing I'd like to talk about real quickly, Imam Bukhari has a narration. We've seen a narration like this before. We've talked about it. Allow me to preface it with a comment. The element of radicalism, becoming radical uh, and very extreme-minded, is a huge problem. It's a very huge problem. And it's the first type of deviation that appeared within the Ummah. When somebody becomes so extreme-minded and so radical, that they take on a very extreme form of practice of the religion, and then they judge everyone through a very, very narrow lens. And they are willing to even disqualify other people's faith. Because they do not meet their level of extremism. And this problem first appeared during the lifetime of the Prophet, peace be upon him. It happened one time at the place of Ji'irrana. After the conquest of Mecca, then they had the battle of Hunayn, then they had the siege of At-Ta'if. They were coming back to Mecca to do Umrah. The Prophet ﷺ was distributing the spoils of war. And this very extreme guy, he showed up. And he started to confront the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ said, this man is evil. It happened once more. Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, some of the spoils of war that were collected there in Yemen, he knew that back in Medina, there was a lot of poverty. Because Medina was home for anyone who didn't have a home. It was everyone's home, it was everyone's family. Right? So they, they had a lot of poverty back in Medina. So he sent some of these spoils of war to Medina to help out there. When it arrived there with the Prophet ﷺ, the Prophet ﷺ started to distribute some of the spoils of war. There were some tribal leaders leaders of different tribes who were visiting Medina to learn about Islam and to talk to the Prophet ﷺ and consider becoming Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ to kind of you know, soften them up a little bit and bring them closer to accepting Islam. It's part of the culture. It's not bribery. It's part of the culture. If you have an elder, you show them, you know, you show them respect, you stand up, you greet them. Right? It's, it's a gesture of respect. You go to visit like a scholar back, you know, in the East. You're in Jordan or you're in India or somewhere like that. And you go to visit a senior alim, a scholar. You take a little gift. You take a small bottle of perfume. Itar. You take a small bottle of perfume and you gift it to them. Barakallahu feekum. Jazakumullah khairan. Right? Like it's a part of adab and etiquette and respect. So part of these tribal leaders, part of it was you show them a little hospitality, give them a little gift to take home to their families. And so the Prophet ﷺ gave them a gift from some of the spoils of war that arrived. So this man, this one individual, he walks up to the Prophet ﷺ. He's described in the narration, غَائِرُ الْعَيْنَيْنِ his eyes were sunken in. Basically describing like almost like a sign of malnutrition. Mushriful wajnatain. His face was gaunt, as they call it. Like his cheeks were, bones were sticking out. His cheeks were sunken in. Nashizul jabha. It's like his forehead was completely like bruised and scratched up. Like he just, it was really roughened up. Kathul Lihya, his beard was completely unkempt. It was big and bushy and wild, going in all directions. Mahluq Ras, he had his head shaved, but it looked like it was shaved repeatedly and kind of roughly, like cuts everywhere on his head. Mushammirul Izar, he wasn't, his pants were like cut from the bottom, they were just like kind of like jagged, like almost cut with a knife. And they were jagged and they were very, very short, like almost up to his knees. He had this look about him. He gets up and he walks over to the Prophet ﷺ and he points at the Prophet ﷺ. I want you to imagine that. He points at him and he says, Ittaqillah, fear God. 
right? Fear God. Right? So you've ever had one of these guys get in your face? They got in the face of the Prophet ﷺ. Right? That's how little sense they have. The Prophet ﷺ says, Waylak, are you out of your mind? Boy, are you out of your mind? Waylak, what's wrong with you? He says, If I don't have taqwa, who has taqwa? If I don't fear God, who fears God? You can tell me to fear God. Qala thumma walla rajul. He mid conversation, the Prophet is still talking, he turns away and he walks away. I've said what I needed to say. And he just starts walking away from the Prophet. Khalid bin Walid, he had just come from Yemen, he had brought these spoils of war. Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala anhu leaned over to the Prophet and he said, Ya Rasulullah, ala udrib unuqahu. Can I please murder him? Right, basically translation. Right, may I please murder him? Like he disrespected the Prophet The Prophet says la, and he says something about it. He says la Allahu an yakuna yusalli. I know that he seems rude and he seems crazy. Maybe he prays. He's a good person. Just we'll make an excuse for him. That's the generosity. That's the kindness of the Prophet Khalid radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he couldn't hold himself. Because he was so bothered by him offending, like you know, being rude to the Prophet. ﷺ. He said, Yo, Messenger of God, who cares if he prays? Look what he says. Look at look, what he says with his tongue does not represent what's in his heart. Look how evil this man is. He gets in your face, he points in your face. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Worry not. He said, Inni lam umar an anquba an kulub in nasi wala ashuka butunahu. He said, Khalid, maybe you're right. Maybe there's evil in his heart. But I was not told to rip open people's chests and their hearts and look what's inside their hearts. If he says, I'm a Muslim and he prays, I don't touch him. It is what it is. But there is a life of the hereafter. He will have to answer to God over there. Then the Prophet ﷺ, after some time, he told the companions, and this is something very important to remember, because we see these types of radical and extreme-minded people in the world today. They're far and few between, but they are there. And sometimes, occasionally, rarely, they cause trouble. They cause trouble. The Prophet ﷺ listened to what he said about them. Hadith of Bukhari, authentically. إِنَّهُ يَخْرُجُ مِنْ هَذَا from these kind, this kind of person, there will come more people from this kind of person. قَوْمٌ يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ رَتْبَ They'll recite the book of God fluently. Fluidly, they'll read the book of Allah. لَا يُجَاوِزُ حَنَاجِرَهُمْ But the understanding of the Qur'an does not go below their throats. It doesn't reach their hearts. Kind of like how it's an expression in Arabic. You know how we say in one ear and out the other? In Arabic the expression is you, you read something, you say something, but it does not sink into your heart. It stops at your throat. يَمْرُقُونَ مِنَ الدِّينِ كَمَا يَمْرُقُ السَّهْمُ مِنَ الرَّمْيَةِ They will leave the religion like the arrow leaves its bow. They will spit kufr from their mouths. The Prophet ﷺ, he warned against these kinds of people. The last thing I wanted to mention here in today's session about Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu and his being sent to Yemen by the Prophet sallallahu something that's very beautiful, is Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu when the Prophet sallallahu sent him, and he told him, you're going to go to Yemen, and you're going to teach people there, and you're going to you know, help people in their religious affairs and religious matters and issues there. He said that, ana hadith sin. I was still very young. Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu was 10 years old when the Prophet ﷺ received divine revelation. This is about 20 years into the, or 22 years, excuse me, into the mission. He's 30 years old in his early 30s. So when he says I'm young, he doesn't mean like a child. But he, at the same time, he's, he, what he's trying to say is, I'm 30 years old, I'm not like a senior. I'm not an elder. And so I felt a little bit odd 
that I should, you know, give judgments to people and tell them how to live their lives. And you should do this and you shouldn't do this. When there's people that are older than me. I'm 30 years old. I'm not 50. I'm not 60. I'm not an elder. I felt like I didn't possess wisdom. So I was very nervous. So I said to the Prophet تَبَعَثُنِي إِلَىٰ قَوْمٍ يَكُونُ بَيْنَهُمْ أَحْدَاثٌ وَلَا عِلْمَ لِي بِالْقَضَىٰ O Messenger of God, you're sending me amongst the people who are going to have issues and situations and I don't know how to give judgments amongst them. Like I don't know how to give rulings. I'm not a judge, I'm not a qadi. The Prophet ﷺ, he tapped me on my chest. It's kind of like tapping someone on the shoulder. He tapped me on my shoulder and he made dua for me. He said, Allahumma thabbit lisanahu. Well, Allah, make his tongue like sound. Allow him to speak soundly. Wahdi qalbahu, guide his heart. And then he further made dua and he said, Inna Allah sayahdi lisanaka wa yuthabbitu qalbaka. Allah will guide your tongue and make your heart firm. He then gave him some advice. Listen to this. It's simple, but think about how profound it is. He said, Ya Ali. He said, okay, let me give you pro tip. Number one. Ya Ali, إِذَا jalasa إِلَيْكَ الْخَصْمَانِ When two people come to you with a dispute, فَلَا تَقْضِي بَيْنَهُمَا حَتَّى تَسْمَعَ مِنَ الْآخَرِ Do not give the judgment until you have heard both of them speak. No matter how convincing one person's case is, they got evidence and they swear by God and all of this, hear them out and then say, yes sir, and listen to the other. And do not give the judgment until then. Just like you listen to the first person. If you just learn to listen, you'll know how to judge. He told him that the biggest part, the first part of giving good judgments is listening. So pro tip number one, you want to lead the people, you want to guide the people, then learn to listen. Listening is the most important skill. And Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, after the Prophet ﷺ made dua for me, and he gave me this advice, and I took it to heart, he says, فَمَا شَقَقْتُ فِي قَضَاءٍ بَيْنَ إِثْنَيْنِ بَعْدُ For the rest of my life, I was never doubtful at any time whenever I gave a ruling or a judgment. I never doubted myself ever again. Allah always guided my heart and always put the right words on my tongue. And in fact, till today, in the Islamic tradition, Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu is known as a possessor of great wisdom. The sayings, the quotes, the judgments, the advice of Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu is studied till today. Profound. He was the one who says, and I'll just share one piece of advice of Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and with that we'll conclude. There's so many, so much advice that he's given that is so profoundly beautiful, but I'll just conclude with one. He says, كَلِّمِنْ nasa bima yaqilun." Speak to people according to their level of understanding. Speak to people according to their level of understanding. أَتُرِيدُونَ أَنْ يُكَذَّبَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ Because when you speak to people about things they don't understand and you create confusion amongst them, particularly about the religion, that will lead to them rejecting Allah and His Messenger. And that will be on you. So yes, preach the religion, teach the religion, share the message with people, but always be sensitive to who you're talking to, where they're at, what they understand, and then craft your message accordingly. That's one of the great pieces of wisdom that Ali radiallahu anhu shares with us. So with that insha'Allah we'll conclude. In the next um, sessions going forward insha'Allah, we'll be talking about Hajjat al-Wida, the farewell pilgrimage. It's a really remarkable, you know, at some level it's the culmination 
of the mission of the Prophet So inshallah, we'll be starting that in the upcoming sessions. And that'll go on for a few sessions because we really properly want to study the Hajjatul Wida. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to practice everything that we've said and heard. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Nashadu wa la ilaha illa anta. Nasaghfiruka wa natawwilayin.